Coming to you live from the Stream.TV studios in Hollywood, California, Pensado's Place is brought to you by Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Avid, Recording Connection, Studio 202, Slate Media Technologies, and Slate Digital, and Audio Technica. Two words, Bob, Clear Mountain. Ruminate, pick yourself back, back off the floor. You <laughs> damn right, he's right here. Gear Expo is popping, ASLA is popping, brand new ITL. You're at the place, it's Pensado's place. Yay. Hey everybody, glad you could drop by today. I'm very, very, very happy and then, uh, Big score, and pal. Anticipating a, uh, big a, score. I don't know about that. Yeah, but, it is. Uh, yes, you do. That's uh, what my, that's what you emailed to me this morning. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, one of the things I'm gonna get a little bit ahead of myself, but I, I can't wait. Um, today, today you're gonna see someone that heavily influenced uh, what I do for a living, and uh, we're gonna share some of that stuff with you. I can't wait. It's gonna be good. Shall we get to it? Let's do it. <clears throat> Lots of stuff. Hey gang, thanks always for joining us. We're excited about this week's show. Obviously, Dave and I feel we've got a very, very special guest. Close to the 90,000 subscriber threshold um, due to all your incredible efforts. 100,000 right around the corner. Uh, I know we say it every week, but this show is indebted to you. We thank you so much. Our sponsor partners are world class. Each and every one of them, most frankly, are busy working together on Gear Expo Nashville. Here's the details. The party is Saturday, September 27th at the Vintage King Nashville facility. This is a stunning shop inside full of the best gear and audio. The showroom gives you a chance to test drive gear, see what's new, A-B things, see what tools will enhance your growth. Outside, a full-on audio block party. Rockstar tour buses are gonna give rides on the Pensado Express for, for really exclusive insider visits. To probably one of the finest studios in the world, right? The finest studio. The <laughs> Blackbird Studios, Audio Technica, and Avid, and Slate, and Recording Connection, all in the house with product giveaways, booths, t shirts, a chance to meet and greet you. Studio 202 will be making sure you get your mug on TV. There will be food trucks, empanadas, beer, DJs, and an insane panel lineup. We're talking. <clears throat> Jakir King, Kings of Leon and Hunger Games, Justin Kneebank, Hunter Hayes, Rascal Flats, Blake Shelton, Leslie Braithwaite, um, Happy, Two Chains, August Alcina. Um, matter of fact, Leslie might be hanging around someplace. Leslie, are you around there? Yep, 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 yep. Oh, Leslie. Leslie, what's up? Hey, man, what's going on? Leslie. <laughs> Had to drop in on you guys. I love it. I love it. So you, you, you coming up to Nashville on the 27th? Oh, uh, you know it. I'm excited about it. I had to just drop in real quick and just, you know, get everybody pumped. I'm pumped. I had to get everybody else pumped. <laughs> hey, Leslie, out. is that color behind you uh, teal? Uh, that would be a teal. Do you not like it? Would I like, like it. it. No, I like it. I'm starting to, oh, I like that better. Ooh, it's like Virgin Airlines. You, you, you know, we're, we're kind of high tech around here. You yes, know, we, you are. Yes, we, you we are. All blue, you know. Ah, sexy. What, uh, <laughs> what color did you have the room when you mixed happy? Um, you know what? My color scheme for Happy was this right here. I was right in somewhere in here in my aquamarine-ish nice. situation. That's gorgeous. Somewhere around here. I like you it. Know. I like it. That's, that's, that's pretty <laughs> cool. Hey, man, we are so happy you're coming up. I know that you're, you're talking to some friends down there and checking schedules. Might be a real cool DJ friend of his. Mm -hmm. Manny Fresh yeah. he's talking to. We, we can't commit yet, right? You're talking to him, Les? Yeah, yeah. We can't commit yet. Uh, Manny and I go way back. He and I are really good friends. He's my daughter's godfather. And so the only thing that would keep him from coming is some kind of scheduling issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he has a lot of stuff going on around the country. So I'm working on getting him to uh, come through. And, you know, can't promise you anything yet. But, I mean... You know, I'm, I'm working on it. Can't tell you how much we appreciate you, yeah, man. Yeah, thanks. It's, it's going to be a ball. We'll talk to you shortly. All right. All right, Les. Okay, Les, let's see, man. So that illustrious gentleman who is going to be, and much more, Matt Maurer and Robbie Burrell, these are contemporary Christian Grant, Grammy and Dove winners from L.A., rocker Stephen Slate and Ryan Hewitt. They're coming in. Session Nashville with John, I call him J-Dub Willis. 
John plays on Kenny Chesney's records, Florida Georgia Line, Luke Bryan. For all you session guys who want to know how that business works, he'll be there. This morning I got the phone with the premier vocal producer in the business, a guy named Kukarel, also in Atlanta. Kuk said he'd be glad to come up. His clients, Rihanna, Shakira, Beyonce, Atlantic Records, they call Kuk in to solve all kinds of things vocally, all confirmed. And former guest of Pensado's Place. And former guest of Pensado's Place. Are you interested in the live business? Uh, Danny Rosenbaum, who's Vice President of Morris Light and Sound, he'll be there. Uh, super hot producer in Nashville, Dave Cobb, will be there. Nashville fixture and giant Vance Powell, Jack White, and Beck will be there. Um, and if Pro Audio had a logo like Jerry West is on the basketball, it would be this guy right here, the master blaster himself, John McBride. So, <laughs> so you want to just plug into his energy for five seconds. It will change your life. Way well, more than that is illegal. He is absolutely the best. Um, so no matter what music you like, what audio field is your focus, take this opportunity to come hang with Giants, get your questions answered. Um, you know, here, here's a chance for you to really expand your knowledge. Think we're done? No. Oh, hell no. Absolutely not. Go for it, Ed McMahon. Okay, let's go. No, that's, <laughs> that's not the role I play ever. <laughs> the rhinestone Rembrandt uh, and fashion icon Manuel will be in the house. Now, this is a guy who dressed Elvis and Johnny Cash and Bob Dylan and a ton of others. He is Nashville and Americana music royalty. We'll be talking with him up on the panel, and some of his very special clothing will be on display. I'm actually and looking forward to that. That's going to be really cool. His history is it's living history. And some of the jackets are going to be worn by some of the panelists. Stephanie Spitfire Willis will be interviewing a lot of you guys to see if you're having fun. We're going to put that stuff on the show while the event is going on. She is my sister, and she is a supernova of a talent. Get interviewed and meet her. Um, our vice presidents of prize giveaways, that would be Chongor Gantz and Cole Nystrom. They have informed me that they will be giving away prizes from UA, Isotope, Avid, McDSP, Audio Technica, Slate, Vintage King, Recording Connection, Ultimate Ears, and ultimately, and apparently, they're not done yet. So get your buns there and win something, damn it, because we're getting a lot of stuff there to give to you. Uh, and finally, there's two other guys who would like to see you, me and Dave. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I want a lot of my Atlanta friends to show up because I don't get a chance to get out there too often. So it'd be fun to see some Atlanta guys. So we'd love to see you. Get your Gear Expo signed. Say hello to us. Let's take a flick. We sure appreciate you, and we're, we're going to come down and, and prove that with you and hang with you. Um, and because of our incredible partners, this is all free. This is Pensado style, is how we do it. So all you have to do is go to GearExponashville.com. You can see that link right here. Put in your email and you are good. That's all you got to do. Response has been bananas, so take my advice. Get cracking seriously, load up and get there. As you go to the site, we'll have information for parking. We have a shuttle that will get you to the event. As you know, ladies, we always ask you to come out in droves. We appreciate you. We know that you, uh, you care about audio and stuff like that. But also, there'll be a bunch of hot guys there. You make our events better. It's going to be engineers. None of them are going to be hot. Trust me. We'll hook it up. <laughs> did you see the Pensado Awards? Hot. I did, yeah. Absolutely. That's true. Now, while your calendar's out, <clears throat> let's mark two other dates. Immediately after Gear Expo uh, Nashville, I think it's October 29th, uh, September 29th through October 3rd, Dave Pensado himself will be at Blackbird Studios for a week doing their Blackbird session series. Again, that's September 29th through October the 3rd. This is an immersive deep dive with the man himself. Plus our man Cole Nystrom is gonna be down there as a very talented added bonus. Um, you want information on that, hit karma at the blackbirdstudios.com for all the info. That's C-A-R-M-A at blackbirdstudios.com. She will help you with details. The other calendar event is what I mentioned in the opening and that's the AES convention in LA. That's October 9th through 12th. This convention is going to be in Hipster downtown L.A. It's going to have a ton of cool and innovative workshops. Uh, Pensado's Place is, you know, we're honored to be the focus of their platinum panel on October 10th at 2 o'clock. Uh, we thank them for, for featuring us, and we're going to have some special announcements during that panel as well. The AES Brass, which is Bob Moses and Michael McDonald, are giving you guys a special VIP code that gets you into this for free. Um, Kudos to them, and I like that we're able to do that for you. Here is the code. You'll see it right here. 
It's AES.org forward slash Pensado. Register at AES.org forward slash Pensado and come see us. Quick tuck. You guys might consider joining this organization. Dave and I have sat with the brass. We've mm -hmm. done some due diligence. And, and we're impressed with what they're trying to do. You know yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, when I first started engineering, they have resources that if you want to dive a little deeper, you've got amazing resources available mm -hmm. to you like like I, I, I was self-taught so I had big huge gaps in my knowledge and AES was uh, was always there for me and by the way uh, it's easier than ever now to get into an AES mm -hmm. convention when I was a kid I had to sneak in Herb Trowick style <laughs> and uh, now you can just take advantage of these offers we're giving you so it's something you need to be a part of and, and one, another reason I like it is because they guard a lot of things that are important to us that we don't ever see in here. Mm -hmm. they, they, mm -hmm. they, they really make sure that, that this thing we love called audio is represented in Congress. A lot of things they do really, really well, standards and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So, um, you need to do it. You need to do it. They, you will be very impressed. They are current, relevant, and becoming really vital. Great job and kudos the new, to them. The new people there are great. Really good. Um, also at AES, we'll be at the Audio Technica booth Saturday at 1 p.m. The good folks there are launching two super hot products. We're going to test drive them this weekend, capture some content. We'll share that content with you. But knowing what they're sending us, these are going to be hot rods, gang. I, I just guarantee you. So um, we'll, we'll deal with that this weekend. Uh, <clears throat> so good stuff going on. Remember, Platinum Panel on Friday, 2 o'clock, October 10th. Audio Technica booth on Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, we'll be doing an Ask Me Anything session for Reddit and a hot product introduction. And finally, before we introduce the new ITL, our boys up at, up at Avid, Anthony Gordon called and said, look man, not everybody's gonna get a chance to go to Nashville. Why don't we give out some Pro Tools 11? So for the next consecutive three or four weeks until we head to Nashville, <clears throat> each week we're gonna give away a Pro Tools 11 to somebody. So pretty simple. Go to pensadosplace.tv forward slash Avid, enter your email, but also go to their Facebook page and like it. All right, so do those two things. That helps us. And helps us, helps you, helps them, helps the show come to you for free. We'll give the first winner out next week, and um, I think I'm done. Yeah. I'm up to Pro Tools 14. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, cool. it's good. Is it good? Yeah. Could you describe it, the changes? Yeah, you, you put on a helmet and you go kind of bathroom style, okay. and your mix just goes out into the world. So you don't have to, oh, so no not, do you touch anything while you're? No, 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 no. it oh, creates just, an MP20. Okay. And of course, that goes out to the one. I see. So it's. But Bob Claremont knows all about it. Oh, this. cool. So only you two guys have it. Okay. Can we do an ITL on that? Let's do it. Okay. Well, why don't you introduce this week's ITL? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this week's ITL, I, I'm using some new things that I had not used before to show you how to mix keyboards and B3s, sometimes known as organs. Hey, guys. What's up? Glad to have you with us again for another Into the Lair. Today, I want to show you. A myriad of things. Uh, I'm going to show you some free plugins, how to use them. I'm going to show you uh, how to enhance some keyboards. Now I'm going to use a, a Hammond B3 that my good buddy Myron McKinley played, and um, it, you might know Myron from his Earth, Wind, and Fire work. Uh, what I want to show you will apply to any keyboard. So, and it actually, this stuff will apply to guitar quite, quite nicely. So, I've got this. Uh, as you can see here, I've got. A stereo organ track, and this is a little bit of supplemental information just to fill in the center channel. Now, let me play it for you without uh, disregard this track up here, 113. Disregard that for now. We're going to use it in a minute. But I'm sending to that track via bus 53 and 54. Let me play it for you as I got it. <laughs> Now, the first thing we did was add a little bit of a uh, Chris Lord algae on this, uh, this little bad boy. Check this out. Okay, one of my new favorite plugins is this Ultra Channel. Go to the Eventide website because um, sometimes you can get some real bargains on this. Uh, this was free for a while. By the time you see this, I don't know if, it, if, you, if you will... Uh, be able to get it free. Now all of these modules can be can be interchanged. So you can slide this guy anywhere you want it in the in the chain. It's got an omnipressor, classic compressor, it's got a gate. 
Uh, we're not using any of this. We're using the, the EQ and a little bit of the micro pitch shift. So here's, oh, I'm going I'm to play you the part and shift, put this on. <laughs> Here's what we've done, kind of smoothed it out a bit. You can see the curve here. Now this is where the fun part comes in. My friend Russ Hughes over at, uh, and Mike, and the guys over at Pro Tools Expert, uh, I, was, I live over on that website. And uh, turns out this is a free plugin that comes with, uh, with Pro Tools, didn't even know it. Now, I'm not using the keyboard, but I'm using the Leslie simulator. Now, what we're doing is, what's an organ without a Leslie, right? So uh, I've come up with, uh, with a preset I like. And let me show you this. I'm gonna feed to, uh, I'm gonna feed to this guy. On, with this. I swear to you, I just got goosebumps. That's pretty amazing. Check it out again, with and without. A little bit of volume difference, but you get. But check this out. You got. You you can. You have. Uh, you're fast, and, and you have all all the different things you've got on a Leslie. Fast and slow for the rotors. You've got. Um, oh man, just everything. If you if you've got Pro Tools, use this. It's really good. Now. I'm also simulating a bit of a 147 here. You see what it says? This is a preset, 147. I'm tweaking this too, so. Subtle, and then I'm smoothing it out here. Let's, let's take all this off on, on just this auxiliary track. Man, I let, let me exaggerate it so that you can hear it a little better. I, I wanted it to be a little more subtle, but let's, let's exaggerate. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, now remember this can be used on any keyboard, any guitar. It's a technique that I'm showing it to you on an organ because an organ, an old B3 sound has a, a bit of, um, a guitar tone to it and it has a, a bit of a synth tone to it, has a little bit of a keyboard tone to it, so not just for B3s, this stuff's for everything. And then it kind of you kind of see the way I think and build sounds and and get get it to where it's gonna be unique and sit in the mix really well. Alright? Next time. Wow. Um there's just no need to get flowery. This is a great week for us. One that we're kind of buzzing about certainly our whole yeah. staff is yeah. um look him up no need to explain we are just thrilled to welcome to our desk the one the only bob clearmount bob hi hi man thank you thank <laughs> you I, you know i feel like i should do something <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did it you already, did already? For both of us. okay cool <laughs> no thanks for having me i really appreciate you oh we love it you don't know this, but I had to go on. over to Bob's and do some housework. I cleaned his car, washed his car. Mm -hmm. I exercised yeah, missed, every... Missed a couple spots. Good. I mean, Good. Oh, I, you're going to win batter's I box. exercised <laughs> every knob on his G+. Plus. Really? Yeah, that takes time. Well, you're going to hear a thump in a minute. That's, that's Will Thompson <laughs> falling over, our producer. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know what's cool? Is generally the greats are the most humble. And the well, coolest. Bob certainly exemplifies that concept. Yeah, He's absolutely. A class act. Class act. Absolutely. Can I talk to him now? Far away, sir. Okay. Bob, again, thanks for coming by, my friend. Thank um, you. Uh, one of the things that, that, I, that, that I encountered that I was hoping you could help me solve is, not at your level, but uh, when you're working on a guest like, I mean, when you're working on artists like U2 or The Stones or um, Bruce Springsteen, and you've had such success with them in the past, when you do a modern record, like the great record you just did with The Stones, how much of the past do you pay attention to, or do you ignore it and try to make a record based on the way you're thinking now? Or is it, does the past affect you when you're working on a modern record? It, the, the only way the past affects me is um, it's just what I've learned about their tastes and what they like mm -hmm. and how they want to be presented. And that will certainly influence me because, you know, I already have some idea of, what, of where to go. Mm -hmm. but. 
I, tr I try to make everything unique, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I try to let them, whatever they've recorded, um, show me the way gotcha. it, itself, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a lot of times I'll, like with Springsteen once mm -hmm. in a while, I, I'll, I'll really think, okay, I, I got this guy now mm -hmm. down. And I've mixed so many records for him and so many live shows and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then he'll completely throw me and say, no, that's curve. totally wrong. It sounds too, he'll usually say it sounds too good. Really? So, yeah, he'll want it to, he'll want it rougher and more, yeah. you know, well, not hear everything really clearly. Wow. When, it, when he says it sounds too good, is, the, is it because the sounds are pristine or is it because the proportional ratio of everything is mixed so tightly? Or what, what is it, what, well, what do you I mean by that? I tend to want to hear every, all the instruments mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes with, well, a lot of people, with Springsteen music in, in particular, he won't want that. I mean, sometimes he does want it. Very mm -hmm. often he'll mm -hmm. want to, like, listen to Born in the USA, and it's all yep. pretty clear. Yeah. Um, God, that, but, that song changed, that mix changed my life. But he, he, he in the later, the later years, he he's, he's really goes for a rougher sound, mm. I think, and, and where you just can't, you can't distinguish a lot of what the, the parts are, that it's just a kind of a mass of sound, you know. And I don't know if you can even answer this question, but in making it sound rougher, is there one thing you can share with me that you start at to make it? I wouldn't know where to start to make it rougher. I'd just... Sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's mostly turn up Bruce's guitar. Oh, <laughs> I gotcha. And, okay. and it's, not, it's not an ego thing. It's not like he wants to hear his guitar louder. Yeah. It's just that if you solo his guitar, you'll understand why. Right. Well, and he calls yeah. it the primal scrub, because uh, it's just nasty. Yeah. Well, his right uh -huh. hand has a, a defining rhythm to the, to the track, too. That's right. That's yeah, that's, that's so much of it. That. Yeah. So much of, the, of the, what the band does is based around what he does. Mm -hmm. I've, well, it's all based around what he does, obviously. Does, does he correlate when he's hearing you mix in the studio <clears throat> that there is some feeling of live for him, is that important to him sure, in yeah. his records? Yeah, I oh, I think be. so, yeah. yeah. I mean, Born in the USA was basically a live album Completely. that they recorded in the studio. Yeah. I mean, there's some overdubs on it for sure, but the band, when he records most of the time with the E Street Band, it's the band playing live as they, they all play together. And, and the other thing, because I see it in his career, is when you have those relationships that go back, one of the dynamics is trust. Yeah. <clears throat> they come to you, you know, as a comfort level. And then the obligation is to try to move it forward and keep it relevant and keep it new, right. but also maintain the trust. That you have to navigate that dynamic, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. You, I mean, you're always trying to bring something new, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. as much as possible. But uh, the yeah, I guess I guess yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Bob, while we're on. While we're on Born in the USA, that snare sound, when I first heard that, um, I had the thought of maybe not trying to be an engineer any longer. <laughs> and then the, then the competitive part of me caught hold and I'm like, I can beat this. Well, I never did. Can you break down for me, one of the things about that snare sound that I really like is the way you use reverbs on, on snares. I know this is a minute little compartment of your skill set, but for me it was a big thing whether to put reverbs on a, there's going to be a question here somewhere, whether, whether to put reverbs on stairs and when you did, how, how, what was your thought process when you added reverb to that? Was it an AMS at the time? That, I think we were, we were sampling actually, it was the early days of sampling when I used, I used an AMS. Okay. Mm. And uh, the reverb was, um, it was a plate, we had plates, we had uh, a power station with two live chambers mm -hmm. and Depends on what song you're talking about. I mean, Bruce is really into making it bigger than whatever, you know, just as big mm -hmm. as it could be. Mm -hmm. And he was always pushing. And uh, I remember he had, th there was a great sound that they got on the, on the song Glory Days, mm -hmm. on the original recording. Oh, yeah. And that was, uh, so we didn't use a sample on that, but it would always, on one of the ones that was recorded maybe at Hit Factory, or something that didn't have the big room, uh, he'd say, Bobby, let's pull out that Glory Day snare drum. Let's put that Glory Day snare drum on this one. <laughs> you know? wow. And so we. Uh, Do you still have sample. that sample? I don't know. I might. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
Because oh, Michelle's going to ask, gonna have, you can ask <laughs> right? I don't, I, I, I don't think I do. No, I don't think I Did it I make it into the Bob Clear Mountain Drum Collection 1 and 2? No. Is it going to make it in 3? Is there no. going to be a 3? You can't. It's the, the, the thing about the, it's interesting about the drum collections is that when um, Doug Rogers from East West first came to me to do it, he said, oh, we really like to put all your, your favorite samples on a, and said, well, okay, I, I uh, talked to my attorney and my manager, who was a publisher, mm -hmm. and they said, you just can't do that, because the thing about sampling, and this is the thing that nobody, uh, nobody got back then, was that once a sound is recorded on an album and it's put out by a label, the label then owns the sound. Even if you recorded it yourself in your living room, yeah. And you know, and not for anybody. If, once you use it on a record, it it's owned property. by whoever yeah. put the record out. So you can legally never use it again. Yeah. That's and so. so all the samples on those we recorded fresh, mm. they, and and they're licensed. When you buy the the sample CD, it's the same with all sample yeah. sample records or collections. Now, mm -hmm. you're buying a license to use that. That's right. That's right. You, mm. know, you don't own them. I can't remember. Help me, but. You did one of the live, big live shows. I can't remember if it was Live Aid or Bangladesh. Did that Whatever. sample make it into that show? Seems like I heard that sample in one of your live. Li live Aid. I was using live the sample, Aid. but it, it, it would have been a, um, from Simple Minds, I think, because that's oh. what I was doing at the time. It wasn't. I was going to get excited because it seems like it seems like I heard that sample in that sh in that live program, but I didn't. It wasn't. It wouldn't have been that. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have used could you just lie and make me feel good? About it? <laughs> yeah, because I, I actually didn't I record. That, actually. I didn't record that album, so it was. Uh, but the Simple Minds, it did. What were you triggering with? The fifteen eighty? I think it was a fifteen eighty. Yeah, and if there's a funny story about that. Is that when the when Live Aid, the the first band was. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I forgot the name of the band. It was some band from Philadelphia, but. Uh, you know, I had the thing all set up, yeah. and I thought, okay, well, just in case there's a problem with the snare, I'll, I can just put this in. But of course, I had the fader up, and I had it all, the, a, this big Simple Mind snare drum, Mel Gaynor snare drum, loaded up in the thing. And so it starts out with fours on the snare drum. I go, okay, I didn't know this song. And, the, and, and then I look up at the monitor, and and the guy's cross sticking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 wow. Really embarrassing. That's funny. To feel like the first, you know, six bars or something like That's that. That's hilarious. It, it, it's hard to recover from something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, it was live, going out live, you know, to millions of people. <laughs> so one of the things that I know is important to you, and we talked about before the show started, is Apogee. Talk about that relationship and how it works in Bob Clear Mountain's life. Well. Um, the converters are just, are, are such a, everything's digital nowadays, right? And, yeah. and I think since analog went away, people are always looking, something's missing from the, from the digital conversion. And, and a lot of people don't even realize what it is. And mm -hmm. that, oh, well, well, you know, I really want to do everything analog because, because I, I, this, this digital stuff is too clinical and too, but, but once Apogee came along, it, it kind of changed all that. And it's only gotten better over the years. The latest Apogee products are just it, they're the most musical sounding thing. I, I mean, just to, for me to, to start with, you know, everything's, uh, I'm mixing analog on an analog desk, so everything's got to come through, get that way somehow. Mm -hmm. And I start with something that's already in really good condition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, every, and, and it, it makes a difference as to how much you EQ, how much you process, the, the more you process, the more flaws in the conversion mm -hmm. you hear. Mm -hmm. And when it's perfect, and it's, it, yeah. just, it just makes my job so much easier. You said one time that for the recording medium to make decisions about the sound of your mix really irks you. So uh, 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 what you're describing is um, the Apogee equipment's not making decisions about the sound you are. <laughs> well, that's uh, I, in the old days when all we had was analog, mm -hmm. I felt that the, that the analog was, you know, analog has a sound and a lot of people really like it. And there's, there's nothing, I certainly don't put anyone down for that, but I, I don't want the, the recording medium to yeah. be coloring the sound for me. And, I, and one of the things that we always could tell when we sit at this desk 
is our guests have been a pretty illustrious set and we hear the things that they rely on and that they think are good and we hear Apogee a lot. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah we That's definitely hear Apogee a lot. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. Are, are there any, any instruments or, or tracks that you just don't like to mix? And conversely, what's your favorite thing to mix? Well, I'll mix anything. You know, whatever, I don't care what it is, it doesn't matter and I'll figure out a way to do it. But, but a lot of the... Um, I get a little bored with loops sometimes, like mm -hmm. drum loops, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, especially the ones that you've heard a million times. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that one okay, again, okay, yeah. you know, and... Uh, Funky drummer, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, and um, some synthesizer sounds just kind of, they're like fingernails in the chalkboard to me. And yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm very organic based, you know, mm -hmm. I, like I'll never get tired of a Hammond organ right. or a, you know, a, a, a great Strat through a... AC30 or something like that. That, that yeah. sound, those sounds don't ever bore me. Yeah. But some synthesizer sounds kind of you know, get on my nerves a little bit. But I'll, like I said, you make it work. You go, okay, this is what it is, mm -hmm. and then that's, work around it. That's, you work it. around it. And, and what was the other question about I sound, sounds I really like? Yeah, yeah, the opposite. Well, like a Hammond organ <laughs> um, or a Strat, a Strat through AC30, <laughs> and a great set of drums. Absolutely. You know, somebody that okay, really. Okay, uh, just let me know when you're done. I'll be right no, back. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Um, going going back to my, my, my snare reverb question, what, what, when you add reverb to a snare, uh, it, it sounds to me like you mess with the diffusion on the, on the, on the digital, when you use digital uh, snares. What, what parameters are you adjusting to get the sound that you want on the, some, like on the new Stones record and the, Cure, and the old Cure record? I only did one, Cure, one single for the Cure. You know? Oh. And, uh, the question's still valid. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if I ad adjust, do that much adjusting. I mean, there's certain sounds. Um, Lately, are you using... I mean, usually, it's, it's, I'll have a couple of reverbs. Like, I'll have something short and bright. Mm -hmm. Like, my live chambers are short and, and fairly bright, like mm -hmm. Motown or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have something longer and then something even bigger and longer. And I'll use combinations of them. And not just for snare drum. I mean, I won't... I usually try to keep everything somewhat in the same environment, mm -hmm. so the snare drum's not going to get anything more unique than anything else, really. I got you. Mm -hmm. So, so you're using three verbs. You start or off more. with, or more. So, Sometimes. so are they all panned left and right, or are they panned in different spots? Like your two chambers are probably left and right, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the the verbs are all. I mean, I'm mixing everything in surround as as while I'm mixing stereo and so they're mm. all kind of surround reverbs mm. or i mean i have a couple of old pcm 70s that i use the sort of left and right actually and um what preset before, do you like tile room i got this thing that um it was a guitar player in a band that i worked with years ago had this sound printed on for a piano track and i thought wow what a beautiful thing i thought it was some kind of midi synthesizer thing mm -hmm. because oh no it's this pcm 70 it's a concert hall with some chorusing on it and he I go oh well here there's one over there why don't you just and he set it up and I wrote the settings down and they've been like that ever been since. Good ever since. <laughs> yeah and it's, it's this beautiful piano sound is it. So uh, tell me to move on if I'm boring you but I don't get this opportunity too often but so so you start with a chamber the chamber will take you like maybe up to a half a second to a second do you pre-delay the next reverb out of the way of that, no, and then it really. starts, or they all start concurrently. Uh, concurrently. They, <laughs> very good. Very they good. um no, they're just kind of on top of each other. Okay. Sometimes they're delayed. I mean, I don't do the same thing every time. I adjust okay. them depending on what's going on. I'm, the live chambers I don't adjust much, but I, I I'll brighten it or dull it down sometimes it, it, depending it, it, on the what it is. It sounds like as you are going through your process and your workflow. <clears throat> it's how it feels and how it sounds. Well, well, it is, you know, and the, I use the alta verb a lot nowadays because they're just natural room sounds, which I always gravitate towards anything that's mm -hmm. more realistic yeah. sounding. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I, yeah, I kind of use my live chambers. I also use the, our other stu studio, the Apogee studio. We've done an impulse response of that. Mm. And so I use that quite a bit for an, just a warm ambience. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of a lot of times the first thing you hear. 
on guitars and things like that. Mm. One last reverb question. When, <laughs> when you're using reverb to someone that has never, like a, like a new, a guy starting out engineering, they tend to, and I know because I used to be that person, you tend to just add reverb because you think you're supposed to. Right. When, when you're adding reverb to a sound, you, 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 you intimated that, that Bruce liked you to do that to make things bigger. What right. is it that your ear is trying to catch and, and understand when you add reverb to, say, a, a, an instrument or a vocal? What are you listening for? I'm, I, it's more of a thing I'm, in my mind, looking at. It's, a, it's more like a stage. Uh, I just try to imagine a, the space that the, either the band is in the, or the singer or, or, or the story of the song sometimes. Oh. Sometimes it's more based on the lyric and what the, the vibe of it is it's about. It's how, just getting, building an environment. I mean, some, I like mixing dry too, like Chad said on, on mm -hmm. your show. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a reverb, why? <laughs> that was great. A lot of times I feel, I feel that, you know, mm -hmm. I'll just mix... If I can, I'll mix completely dry. Mm. I mean, it's hard to do that. It's hard to, you yeah. have to have a very special piece of music to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Like Steely Dan used to do it all the time, but mm -hmm. they were Steely Dan. Right. They were right. unbelievable. Right. But um, um, so it really changes to, so radically depending on the, the piece of music. I just mixed a couple of albums that were nothing but reverb, it seemed like. And, and uh, it seems like reverbs kind of come back with a vengeance lately. <laughs> you know, there, were, there was a while there in the yeah. 80, or the 90s, I think, where everything got real dry. Yeah. And now, you turn on KCRW, and it's, and it's everything's it's, just yeah. floating. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I'm that's wondering, true. I'm wondering if, if, if that's, I wonder if you're to blame to that, cause, <laughs> for, because I'll take the blame. The Roxy <laughs> Music record was wet. Yeah. And after I heard that record, I had a mix with a snorkel. I mean, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was, right, Wizard? I was like, man, Sorry, I was man. like, I put reverb on pasta. I put reverb on everything. Well, I hope you didn't choke or anything. Like that. <laughs> reverb. And that's what, I'm uh, more than this, hey, guys at home, go, uh, not right now, but after we're done, go check out Rox, uh, uh, Roxy Music more than this off of the Avalon album. Uh, that's one of the seminal records that changed my life another one that bob did well that was you know what that was it was the, the stairway at that power station that oh, did yeah. you compress it no it's so just it the way long? it sounded it was it was like four seconds depending wow. on how humid it was that day if it was raining or not really it would go between four and five seconds the humidity would affect it oh the, big time i'd mix the ballads on rainy that. days Really? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> Absolutely. That's a headline. <laughs> oh, no question. <laughs> no question. It was amazing. It was a 75 foot stairway. We had a couple of uh, big um, uh, 604Es in there. Mm -hmm. You know, those big red speakers? Mm -hmm. And pointing down, and the, but the mics were way up at the top. And so it would kind of, the sound would just do this oh, crazy weird. thing. It was just a magnificent sound. Wow. I'll give you one opportunity to blame it on Brian Ferry, and then we'll move on. <laughs> 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 yeah. What, what was funny was the, the the next album I mixed after that was a band called The Divinals from sure. Australia. Oh, yeah. uh, and I touched myself. No. It was, uh, that, no. That was no. their hit song. They, that was their hit song. That was a great. That yeah, was their but hit why song. did I explain it? I just was <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately I didn't have any part of that because that was a, that was a great song. But um, no, this is years before that, oh. and. Um, I was so, I just finished mixing Avalon with these big lush reverbs and the big hi-fi sounds and so I started mixing this record and everything was lush and big <laughs> and you know these guys are looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And finally they, look, can we talk to you for a minute after the two, two mixes? Because listen, we're not big and hi-fi, we're like a little spiky ball, you know, this like jagging and, and annoying and, and uh, you know, very small and kind of. And I was like, and then I listened, I go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're so right. I was completely wrong. And I then I went first, back and remixed. And then, back. What's yeah. your technique for purging all the last stuff from the last project? Because I have trouble with that, too. You just per have to, you know, think again. Yeah. That's all. You just got to, that's, that's really part true. of what we do. Mm -hmm. I, I that's think. pretty cool. You know what I mean? And you see, somebody's got to slap you in the face and say, come on, what Wake the up. hell's wrong Wake with up. you? Yep, <laughs> yep, that's true. I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot, Bob, um, like I haven't already. Mm -hmm. um, but um, tell me if you, think, if you think this is an accurate statement. We can talk a lot about specific techniques 
and that'll help a lot of people, but I think we can help them more by explaining to them your philosophy about mixing to the story, let the song tell you what to do, the, those, those deep philosophical concepts that have made you who you are. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna take a little bit of time. Um, like I said earlier, I copied your techniques as best I could, which was poorly, and, your, and, and what, I, what I liked about your sound, the problem was you changed every song and had a different technique and a different sound, and I'm chasing something that's just not going to work out. It. <laughs> so it set me, I was, I was halfway kidding, but it kind of set me back because I, I idolized his work so much, and I, and I wanted to catch up because I was, I was already late to the, mm -hmm. to the party. And then, and then after probably about five years of that, I realized he's not even trying to do that. He's, he's, he's trying to make the song sound better. He's, he's, he's trying to make me feel something, want to own this and cherish it. Can you amplify that concept? And <laughs> you said it just so did much it. more. <laughs> well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you let the story and the song tell you what to do? Is it a function of your taste and your experiences and I, your musicality? I think it's just taste, you know, I really do. It's, uh, I mean, once you know what the gear does, I mean, I, I don't even think the gears are, I hate to say it, I know there's a lot of gear freaks out here, but it's not all that important. Mm -hmm. it's, it is more about the feeling and how you relate to the music and how, if, if you're getting it. I mean, sometimes it's, it's having a good conversation with the artist or who, yeah. the writer or the producer, whoever mm -hmm. you're working with. And then it's, um, it, it's like letting the, the music speak to you. It's not about soloing the bass drum. That's, Right. We're damn sure, mm -hmm. you know, I and mean, you go through and you figure out what, I mean, for me, as a mixer, as you know, if you haven't heard the piece of music for yet, you put the thing up and you go through and you try to, you kind of listen to the rough mix maybe, and you go through and you listen to what mm -hmm. all the characters are in the play. That's mm -hmm. how I kind of think yeah. of it. Well, that's kind of a neat way to do it. Yeah, they're all sort of uh -huh. characters and, and what are the, what's the contribution of each one? Mm -hmm. oh. And sometimes a couple of them don't even belong in the story. Mm -hmm. and so. Out to go. I love that. Really that. Thanks for sharing that. That's 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 mind-boggling. No. I like the part <clears throat> where you say some of them don't even belong in the story because that's, that's probably right. the most germane part of the process is can what be. not to use. That's right. It can be. And then then figuring out. Right. I'm into stereo, right? Mm -hmm. And so so I go through and figure out. Okay, how is this? How is what's the staging like? And where do these guys come in? You know, what door does this, this guitar come in on? And. and uh, I might be too metaphorical there. I don't know, no, but I like it. but kind of the, it's that's how I think about it, uh -huh. and uh, and and once you get that, and you get sort of a balance, and it's funny with stereo, the balance isn't always oh that you got to have something equal on both sides, yeah. but so, sometimes the verse will have something more dominant on the left side, and then the chorus will have something more dominant mm -hmm. on the right side. Mm -hmm. you Did know, you expand on that? Or not? I'm not following you. Well, just just I know some mixers always have to if there's something going on on the left yeah I'm, they, I'm, I'm, I'm a slave to that sometimes yeah you gotta have to have something kind of right. equal on the right mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't have to be simultaneously equal mm -hmm. like one part mm -hmm. of this the the verse could have something on the left and then the B section might have something answering it on the right gotcha mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like that it's like to me that's because I'm sitting in the middle, for a lot of people that listen to music, they're probably off in the kitchen and it doesn't matter much to them. Yeah. But to me, that's kind of important. And it makes, it makes a clearer picture and it makes it easier to, to take in everything. And plus the fact then, of course, the voice is usually in the center, which is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so that nothing's, there's this hole in the center. I, I try to make a, a place for the voice so that you can actually have a lot going on, but it's never, it's never getting in the way of, of the story of the song. Mm. You know, the communication. Um, you had a question. Right, well, no, you? I was just. Well, what our audience is having, is is the opportunity to understand an art form that. The current crop of upcoming folks may not get that lesson. How important the song is, how important to allow it to be your guide, right. how to serve it, and so on and so forth. And, and sometimes I think that craftsmanship gets lost because we have so much technical stuff available to us. Well, the technical stuff isn't, yeah, it, don't get hung up on the technical stuff. It, it services stuff. it. It's not, and, it's not your main thing. You know, right? And the, the gear thing is like, you know, what, which compressor you use. Right. Okay, you go plug something in, and how's that sound? That sounds all right. Yeah, fine. 
move on. That's you good. know, don't don't <laughs> obsess know. about. You know, I hear these stories about people will, will, will sit there and they'll try, you know, eight different compressors until they actually decide on the right. <laughs> it's like really, <laughs> are you going to waste all that energy and time on? They all do pretty much the same thing. I mean, they sound a little different, of course, but yeah. you know, I don't. I'm just no, not that picky, <laughs> you know. I, I really, I'm really not. not. Well, you, you, you're selective about where you, what you focus on, would probably be the way I would see it. Yeah. In terms of a select, in exactly, terms of you're, following you're so your right. work so closely. And, and also, it's something both of you say all the time. Sometimes it's about taste. It's just taste. It's yeah. taste. Uh, you, you, yeah. you and I have that conversation all the time, yeah. and you, you propel that, and, and you, you exemplify that, and, and that's not about that. Compressor or this it's reverb not about unit. A specific thing. Yes. You know, I mean, I got a few yeah. things that I, I don't have a bunch, a lot of gear. I just have a few bits of things. You yeah. know, Is there one piece of gear to, to, to be devil's advocate and slightly Oscar Wilde traditional smartass? Is is there any one piece of gear that you feel uncomfortable doing without? Yeah, I'm probably doing the, a mix with. Um, yeah, besides my, my, the SSL, <laughs> yeah, the SSL, of course, the computer and the SSL is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. But the LA3A is is just such a great vocal compressor, uh, and I go between that and, well, most people use 1176. I have three 1178s, which are basically stereo 1176s, mm -hmm. which I actually like better. For some reason, when I use an 1176, it never sounds right to me. It could be just I'm used to the 78. Uh -huh. but, what would, but, uh, what would sonically be the difference to you? It's just something about, because I use it on a snare drum most of the time with the parallel compression with that. Uh -huh. And there's just something about the, the snap it, it gives me that uh -huh. I just really like. Mm -hmm. And it does a nice thing for the vocal, which is very similar to the, it's probably almost the same on a vocal, 1176. Mm -hmm. when, when you're using a, a compressor on a snare, how do you set, what's your philosophy on the release time? Are you putting the release time of the, of the compressor? Pretty fast. So, but, but does that affect the, the, the feel or the timing? Yeah. So that's what you're using to set with is the release time well, to set the timing? The, the important part is more the, the attack time, I think, because that's how much actually actual snap you get. So I usually mm -hmm. keep that about uh, 3 o'clock and then the release time of the That's kind of slow. That's slow, really? Yeah, well, it, it, yeah, for attack time, I guess it, it kind of is, because if, you, if, if it's any faster than that, then there's not an, it, the attack is too quick. Mm -hmm. it's, there's not enough meat to it, so, to me. So, going back to your visual, uh, visualization, like, you're visualizing the attack of the snare, and then, and then it, I, I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, and then, and then as, the, as the sound starts to come down a little bit, that's where the uh, compressor would grab it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then and then bring up the, the tail end. And then that extends that it, and then the release lets more. you. That's that's fascinating. I guess so. I don't know. I just turned the knob. <laughs> that sounds, sounds right. right. You know, cool. I go, well, that sounds good. I really, I never, I, I don't that. think about it like that too much. That. You know, I just know that there's a certain point in that attack time where okay, there, I got the meat of the, the, the snap on the snare drum, and, but it's not. It's, it's not destroying the tail end of it. Uh, I hope this is funny to I everybody mean, else. It was funny to me you're, today. You're when, better mix of that than me. You know no, 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 no. I am you, but a, a third-rate version. That's probably what you're liking. Um, I, I, you, you, you described the importance of gear, and, and I, I, I understand that because I followed your career. But the temptation sometimes to have that piece of gear that someone of your status uses and having that be the only difference between me being as good as you is just, just too tempting. So I'm reading a Maureen Droney interview on you and you mentioned the funk logic. I immediately Googled the <laughs> no. funk logic and I'm going trying to find it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to find it and then, then of course at some point I, I understood what, what you meant and why you said it and, and I got caught. I, 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 I'm like, why That's am okay. I chasing gear when I should be trying to talk to Bob about these things? Anyway, good one, good one. You guys, you guys figured out for yourself the inside yeah, joke. Yeah, I, I, I put everything through my fun closet. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, me. It, <laughs> it started with the first Cool the Gang record back in 74. That's right, yeah. right? That's, wow. Man. Uh, oh, man, you, you got, got 
Oh, absolutely. But you absolutely. know what, Bob? It's just we love gear. I know you love gear, and and and, and they're tools. There, it's a hammer, a carpenter, a screwdriver, and all that. And and you always want a better hammer. You always want a better screwdriver. And and uh, sometimes you sometimes you still get caught in that in wanting that one piece of gear that's going to just change everything for you. And, well, so, it hasn't come yet, but I'm still looking. The piece yeah. of gear is really the computer and the uh, and the G series for me. Yeah, and, and this yeah. guy up and here. And nothing else does that. Mm -hmm. That's what that does. As you uh, loosen up your arm for batter's box, mm -hmm. the, so it's 2014. We're going into 2015. What excites you about where we are musically? For you know, what can they hear? For guys that are coming up, like I'll give you an example. I went from when we started the show to being sort of. I don't know where the business is going, and it seems unexciting, and it's just, you know, there's compressed and rate. And now I'm re-enthused about what's going on and some of the musical opportunities and some of the daring stuff that artists are doing. How do you see it? Are you, are you enthused? Well, it's obviously, it's about the reverb business. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's about that one piece of gear. <laughs> no. um, that, that's a tough question, because... Uh, are you optimistic? Isn't much. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, not guys. Really. The industry's over. See you later. No. no, no, of course not. But uh, yeah, I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm hopeful. Let's okay. put it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that with something exciting is going to happen, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I think something will. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Do you still get? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the, and it seems like it's happening that live music is. Absolutely. Making a comeback. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I think part of it is, is actually because of the internet. I mean, the internet's gutted the music business as we know. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a lot of crazy people out there who think, oh, music should be free. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, but now because records don't make any money, mm -hmm. everybody's out uh, on the road. Cloud business. And I think that's fantastic because this is what I love. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mix. Probably more than half of what I do are live concert videos. Mm -hmm. Wow, that I do much. a lot of stuff to, yeah. And, that, and, and I just love doing it. It's just so much fun. Even if it's music that I've heard over, I mean, I must have mixed, I can't tell you how many Stones and Springsteen sure. live concert videos I've mixed. Sure. And every time it's just, it's so much it's fun. I just thing. love doing it, you know. And I think that's where we see, because we get the opportunity to sit with people weekly, <clears throat> The way I put it is, the record business is in trouble. The music business is it's evolving and going other things, and it's that's true. what I'm optimistic about. Does that it's make true. sense to you? Yeah and, yeah, and and I think it's good, and I think people should get out and listen to live music. Absolutely, we see you it in the I mean? EDM world. That I, whole dance thing is incredibly. Incredible. And I, I hope that more artists, you get a lot of these artists that you have to make stems for them, for all the things that are on the record, so that they can make their live shows sound exactly like the record. And I hope people get away from that. Me too. You know, because I'll ma them. make a record, and then I'll, I'll go to see them, or I'll listen to a record, and I'll go to see them, and I don't want to hear the this, record. Absolutely. I want to hear people playing music. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it is, I want them to play the guitars and play the drums, and, yeah. and I want them to change it. Exactly. You know, I, I want them to extend them the middle eight or whatever absolutely. it is and absolutely. change the arrangement and absolutely. make but, it more know, interesting. You and I, if we, if we consider this particular moment in time that you're describing a, a bit of a vacuum. Uh, nature abhors a vacuum and in music when we get one of these vacuums and you, you, you and I have seen it before during the disco period, during parts of the 80s, that vacuum sucks in a, a great new act like Nirvana or it'll bring yeah, in. Absolutely. And so That's I true, think the negative part is we get, we've got a little bit of that no doubt but the the hopefulness that you expressed, I agree with you 100%. It's gonna, there's something that's there's good about stuff going to, on. some new Beatles, yeah. some new something's gonna no come question. in that's, that, that couldn't have existed without this valley yeah. getting and us back up to the mountaintop. Not to say there hasn't been some great things. I mean, we were talking about Pharrell earlier, yeah. earlier with that, that happy song. I mean, Amazing. well, that came on, this is different. I went, Boom. wow, this is great. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was such a cool thing. And every now and then there's something that comes along like that. that Game changes that but you don't expect, which yeah. is I, 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 pretty I, cool. By the thing. way, Bob, I, 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 I appreciate <coughs> and applaud your courage for delineate, deli you know, telling us about those concepts that you have because it's, uh, you know, it's it, it it takes courage to do that, doesn't it, Herm? It does. It also takes courage for you as an athlete to <laughs> take this ball and throw it that way and then watch it sail over the 
folks say a little bit. Yeah, hopefully, fits. it won't mark the end of my career. No, it won't. Like, wow, <laughs> would, would you be able really to just crap. skip this one today? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you got to go through the pain, buddy. We, <laughs> oh. we, we talk a lot of stuff, so we got to step up to it. Oh, Far my goodness. Away. First, first one. Okay, Bob, bass. Yeah. What? Good, good answer. Yep. Oh, we're, we're in the batter's box thing. Here. Oh, okay. So one word answer uh, that comes to mind whatever, about whatever. bass. Uh, bass. Um, um, 33609. Ooh. Nice. Neve. Piano. Uh, piano. Um, Pull Tech EQP 183. Ooh. And a, and a SSL compressor. Ooh. <laughs> GL384 or just the real one? The, um, the, the rack mounted one? I, I think it's a GL384. Yeah, it's the SSL. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's what they call Vocals. it. Vocals. As far as mixing or? Mm -hmm. uh, nothing special. Oh, LA3A or uh, 1176. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, clean sounding guitars. <laughs> What's that? Clean? A clean sounding guitar. A clean um a, guitar. a jangly Springsteen -y guitar. Uh, Poltec EQP three EQP one A three. Um, stereo bus. Oh, SSL oh, bus compressor and the G G plus. Delays. Okay, well, I've got a couple of um, old SD three thousand Rollins. And, and, and there's a, a Yamaha D5000, which nobody knows about. <laughs> wow. The Rollins, by the way, double as a coffee warmer, if you need yeah. that. Um, <laughs> Plug-in. Uh, uh, Altiverb. Okay. Um, a rock guitar sound. A uh, rock guitar sound. Uh... SSL EQ, I guess. Okay. Springsteen's right here. <laughs> um, and this will be an easy one. D -esser. All right. Well, that's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> you got about 20 minutes for me to explain that. <laughs> that's why I have it's. There's a diagram of it on my website. Really? But it, yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a patch. It's not actually a D -esser that I use. I mean, I use the the, the old um, DBX 902s, mm -hmm. but of course can't get those anymore um, but for backing vocals and things like that and for other things but um, there's, there's a patch that I do on the SSL and I, 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 I want you guys to look it up it's, it's beautiful mm. uh, is the reason I brought it up it's all, like an automated DS or really yeah mm. um, cheapest gear that you've used on a hit mm. SM57 mm. there you go um, Herb, I'm done. <clears throat> you know the guy that comes up to you really quietly and goes, come with me. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just disappear. Yeah. It just happened to you. He cleaned my clock. Well, but just in a very quiet and elegant way. Just, I'm going to kill you. I'm killing you. You're now <laughs> Bob dead. Bob speaks through his records loudly. But yeah, but oh, see, I got to watch the pain go across. And, um, and about the third one, you were pretty <laughs> much over. <laughs> I don't like killing you. <laughs> Dang, I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> you found out too late. Uh, let's introduce our man, Chong Gorgans, in the newly sponsored corner office. Uh, Mr. Chongor went up to Las Vegas and sat with our girl Zoe Thrall oh, I love the at Studio at the Palms and um, worked out an arrangement and now they are the sponsor of corner office. Chongor, good for you. Yeah. Thanks so much guys. I think I've had like four or five number one records I did at the Palms. Absolutely, but this is now about Chongor. <laughs> no, it's Pensado's place. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, Chongor, grab your moment. Do we have um, some Excellent. questions for our guests? Yeah, we got a bunch. Okay, far this, away, sir. Newly sponsored, sir. This first one's from Damon Martin. Over the course of your career thus far, what turns out to be your go-to vocal chain for lead vocals? Hmm. That's uh, not one. You've done that one. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It's, well, either an LA-3A or a, um, 1178. Hmm. And um, SSL EQ, just a little whatever it takes. You oh, know. you don't use an outboard EQ on vocals? I don't. Oh. Hmm. But you use the E-Series e EQ? E-Series EQ on SSL, cool. yeah. Chongor, give us another one. From Johannes Eberhard. With mixing stereo and surround at the same time, how do you set up your console and mix both formats while not comp compromising too much on the workflow? 
<laughs> well, it's, that's well, a, that's a, a long. Course. That's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that really is a long. Yeah, yeah, I, I think what I think what Johannes is asking is, uh, does that impede your workflow? No. To have Trinity Bell? Oh, not not you can at do all. It both. No, it's really it's very simple. I mean, I put all the the small faders at Unity Gain basically as I start out there, and then that feeds a um, post fader to the to the bus selectors, and then I select buses up there yeah. for the speakers for the different channels, and uh, it's a bit more complicated than that. There's kind of there's some tricky ways I, I do it, right? But uh, and then the, then the the small fader becomes a trim to the surround. So the main mix is the is the stereo, and uh, um, the surround mix is sort of an extension of the stereo mix. Mm. But mm. you can't, uh, on your console, you can't automate the small faders. Is that a disadvantage? No, but it's, it's just following the, the main faders. It's a, oh, it's oh, a post, post fader gotcha. sound. Okay, I gotcha. So it's just, a, it becomes a trim. So if I want to put, turn something up in the back, I can, I can, do, I can adjust the, the ratios between the, the stereo and the surround. And then I, have a, I just switch back and forth to what I'm listening to. Mm. Mm. And then it all prints at the same time. But you can't. You can't DS in that mode, can you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can go to this website. You still can? <laughs> well, yeah, because it's the DSer is working off the, the big fader, off the VCA. Okay, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. That's right. the beauty of an SSL. There's a million ways you can set it up. It's really true. And it's you had, so you were, versatile. You had a lot to do with with that evolving from the B to the E. Uh, no, not really. No, I. The first one I. Well, the first one I worked on was a was a B, but mm -hmm. but that just got me into the SSL. The the E was already being made, you know, when mm -hmm. when I came up, when we bought one at Power Station, which was the first one in the United States, actually. And mm -hmm. um, but I, that's why I liked it because it was there was you could do so much with it so easily. Mm -hmm. Plus mine, of course, I modified the hell out of it. I got a lot of mat factory mods and. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot going on in there. Going back to Johannes's Johannes, uh, question, is there, is there a board that you think would facilitate surround a little more readily and easily than, than, than the, the I, G? I wish. I wish there was. You, I that is the best. And if I had a computer that could do what the, the G series computer does, okay. which I'm amazed at after all these years. I mean, the last software update was 1995. Wow. <laughs> and nobody's come close yet. And that's still a Motorola chip in that thing, too. It's old. It's just ancient. It was designed in the late 70s originally. Wow. It's been updated quite a wow. bit. But Chong, give us another one. From Pat Hundley. What was one mixing mistake you were making 20 years ago that you still shake your head at today? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <sighs> mixing mistake. Coming uh, on Pensado's place. Might have been that. <laughs> well, might have been. Yeah, right, yeah. You'll regret that for the next 20 years. Yeah, well, I'm really going to regret this. My God. Um, might have been that born in the USA snare drum. Because <laughs> it was just a little over the top, I think. I mean, we just went back in the 80s, it was all about how big can you make the snare drum. And Bruce really pushed it, too. Yeah. He goes, oh, make it bigger, make it bigger. But uh, well, when, when I went to mix Robbie Robertson's first album, uh -huh. Um, uh, David Lanois, who produced it, told Robbie, oh, you don't want that guy with the board in the USA. It's going to put that board in the USA snare drum all over your record. <laughs> and when Robbie told me that. I was like, oh, my God, no, no. no <laughs> Just please. scarred me for life. He's following me. Wow. Chango, you got another one? Yeah. FD Champion, as a young engineer, what was the one experience that cemented your decision to continue pursuing this career? One experience? Uh, Getting hired. It was, uh, well, when my, the last band split up, I think. <laughs> it was actually, it's funny, because becoming, uh, working in a recording studio was my A plan, and the, the last band I was in was the B plan. Because yeah. I was, yeah, I traveled with my brother. We spent like seven weeks or something like that traveling across the country to California, and I was going to get a job, because I'm originally from Connecticut. Right. I was going to try to get a job in a studio in California and San Francisco back back in the that back in the day, sure. in the early '70s, yeah. San Francisco was the place. You know, talking about reverb. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, then I got a phone call from this guitar player who I was friends with back in Connecticut, and he said, "Look, we're, we're putting this band together. You got to come back and play bass." And I went, "Uh, all right. Well, we'll give it one last shot." And then that was once that was over. Then the, can I, can I throw a little footnote? 
you play bass with the Dead Boys, a, 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 a fairly well-known kind of underground punk band. People don't know you got a you got a little punk in you when you go down <laughs> to sit down and mix. You still do. I can feel. I, well, your... I was a big punk rock fan. The late '70s, I was down at CB's and, and oh, yeah. uh, Max's. Max's every weekend. Sure. You know, sure. I loved that stuff, and uh, I produced a couple punk bands. I produced a band called the the um, Tough Arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Um, really? Let's see, there was another band called the, the Rosillos, that were a Scottish band actually, and they were sort of a punk pop band. And uh, I worked on some Ramones here and there oh, a little bit. I miss the Ramones. And uh, yeah, me too. I know they were great, and I just loved all that stuff. Yeah. And all those bands had good songs, though. They had good songs. Yeah. And they were just fun. It was it was a reaction to the the sort of prog rock of the 70s. Well, that I think vacuum we were talking about, let's oh, right. draw it in. Yeah. It was just, man, you'd go in there. I, I, I remember walking into CBGB's and uh, going in for the second set, because I could never get, my girlfriend spent five hours getting ready at the time, so it was always, <laughs> always the, we'd get there around 11. We didn't go into the lair on that. <laughs> and, and, uh, so people would be coming out of the first set, and I'd kind of go, oh, how are the Ramones, you know? And, uh, oh, man, they were, they were really fast tonight. They were really fast. It wasn't that they were great. They were really fast. <laughs> That's but it was just, and people just had a great, it was a, yeah, it was just a fun time. It was amazing energy. energy. Uh, one of the ways we gauge whether the show has just been good or not is that the time flies. This is about the fastest hour. I know. Um, this is fun. It really, I enjoy this. Oh, thanks, Bob. Can I? Can we just be a little greedy and say, at some point in time, your schedule permits, can we have you back? Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Are you kidding? Ain't telling the truth. Huh? He ain't telling the truth. What's on you, buddy? <laughs> 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 you <gotta> deliver it. <laughs> okay, more yard work, more car washes, exactly. more guys, console knob. It. Oh, speaking gotta, of knobs. More, Go ahead. I was going to say, you guys got to come on my show if I ever have one. I would one. love to. Yeah, let's do <laughs> it. Oh, when I to. get a show. No, we'd love I to. I forgot, her, but I've got a comrade in arms with this knob-loving affair I have. Bob loves knobs, okay. too. Right, Bob? Mm -hmm. See, the greats like knobs. Well, yeah, okay. that's right. Can Absolutely. I conduct a little business on air? <laughs> yeah. Because if you'd ever like to do a show, mm -hmm. we, could, we could talk about that and create one <laughs> for you. We're pretty good at it, so we'd, nothing would be more. Cool. That'd be sad and neat. Couldn't have a Bob Clear Mountain show through our window. Yeah, I don't want to so, take it. No, no, no we, we, we work it out. Away. Trust me. <laughs> um, but for now, we'll, we'll do that over lunch or something. Um, yeah. We are just so honored, man. It's just yeah. such a great vibe. And, and uh, I think instructive for our audience to know that <clears throat> no matter how much you know and how many widgets and gidgets and stuff you have, it comes back to taste and servicing the song and what feels right and going that way. It's about the music, yeah. That's right. right. Yeah, I think most guys that do what I do would say the same thing. You are um, even better in person than, than the rep, man. It's such a pleasure. Dave, Thank take you. us home. Okay. Hey, guys. Um, when you're starting your career out, make sure you're chasing the right things. You know, one of the, one of the threads that permeated today's show was about how important the song is, and, and our job as engineers is to bring out everything about the song that's, that's good about the song. And like Bob said, kind of tuck away and hide some of the things that you don't need. And, and make sure that's your goal, and, and I think you'll come closer and quicker to getting your, your uh, career goals met by using that philosophy, just like Bob said. The, the, the gear comes and goes, trends come and go, but great records with great songs are here forever. And those are the ones you want to be a part of because that's where legacy comes from and nobody has done that better than Bob. So let him know that you enjoyed his, his segment on the show and we'll see you next week.